Hello and welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essentials series. In this video, I will construct the trigonometric unit circle. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, uh, you may recall that I said that some teachers and textbooks encourage you to memorize the unit circle, but everything that memorizing the unit circle enables you to do, you can also do just by memorizing the two special triangles here. Okay, and I guess I'll also explain why that is the case as well in this video, so long as it doesn't get too long. Okay, this will get a little bit messy. Maybe it will be easier to zoom in so I can fit more information on this diagram, but I have a computer generated trigonometric unit circle. So when I'm done uh, and you've seen the construction, you can just look at the more, uh, you know, the, the, the prettier computer generated version. So I'm going to indicate these lines at pi over four radians, pi over three radians, pi over six radians respectively, but I will also include one of their multiples. So this angle here, I might change the size of this pen, okay, so that I can fit more stuff in. So this angle would be pi over four radians, so pi over four, okay? And to go to here would be two pi over four. Somewhere here would be three pi over four. This would be four pi over four, and this would be here, five pi over four. Okay, so this one here is five pi over four. Okay, now that would be the size of that angle. Okay, that would be five pi over four. Okay, so that's what I mean when I when I write the size of the angles in radians on the line. Okay. That's what I'm denoting. I'll continue to put down the rest of the special angles and a corresponding multiple. So pi over six is 30 degrees. Okay. Come on. Every time you get it there, when you take your fingers off, you risk changing the angle. Okay, I'll do pi over six in green. Okay. Change the size to something really small. And this here is pi on six. Okay. And this here is seven pi on six. Okay, that's seven pi on six. Let's put down, yay, first go in red. Pi on three and a multiple of pi on three. So this here, change the size. This here would be pi on three. Surface pen is a bit buggy. Pi on three and this here is four pi on three. Now, all that's left to do is the same thing in the remaining two quadrants. So I will rule a line. I'll do it in blue as well. Okay, well, if that's pi on four, pi over two is two pi on four, and this would be three pi on four. Okay, this angle here, I'm sure you could work out, is two pi on three. And this angle here is five pi on three. Okay, one more to go. I'll do it in green.
this angle here is 5 pi on 6. And this angle here is 11 pi on 6. I hope I have not made any mistakes. If you think I've made a mistake, let me know in the comments. Okay, now all that's left to do is calculate the sine and the cosine of each of these angles. So in each quadrant, there are three angles to do because 0, pi on 2, pi, and 3 pi on 2 are already done. So three angles times four quadrants is 12 times two trigonometric functions. That's 24 calculations to make. All right. Then if we count this, all right, that's 24, 25, 26, 27. All right. But there's two values in each of them. So I think this comes down to 32 things all up. Okay. Let me double check. Yeah, 32. Okay, so let's get to it. And it will actually be much quicker than you think because I'm going to make use of the special triangles. So if we go down here, all right. Let's calculate the sine of the three angles in our first quadrant. So I'll zoom out a bit and we will find that the sine of the first one is pi on three. Okay, looking at the relevant special triangle, that's root three on two. Okay, and we know that in the first quadrant, they will all be positive. Let's find the cosine. Okay, that is. One half. Okay. Let's find the sine of pi on four. Okay, that happens to equal the cosine of pi on four, as you can see from the special triangle. Both of these are one over root two. Okay. In the computer generated image, I have the solutions for these pi on four angles, and multiples of them have been rationalized. So you will see root two over root two because the solution has been rationalized like this, which I don't, and some textbooks don't recommend doing. Okay, because you can no longer read off the properties of the triangle anymore. Okay, but it's the same thing. Uh, let's find the sine and cosine of pi on 6. Okay, so from the special triangle, that is 1 half. And the cosine of pi on 6 is going to be root 3 over 2. Okay, so now what we can do is include these on the trigonometric unit circles as x and y coordinates. Okay, so we are pretty much done and you'll see why. Okay, when we go to the trigonometric unit circle, let's just take pi on three. Okay, we know that at that point on the unit circle, the x component for that point is one half and the y component is going to be root three on two. Okay, if you're not sure what I mean, I'm about to show you. Did I do pi on 3 or pi on 6? I did pi on 3. Okay. Yes, I did do pi on 3. So here, this point would have coordinates 1 half and root 3 on 2. And if you were to just Take a look at where it seems like this vertical line would intersect the x-axis. It seems like this here would be a value of x equals one half. X equals one half. It's very small, sorry. But our answer seems to visually make sense. Okay. For pi on four, we found that the x and y coordinates were the same. One over root two for the x component and one over root two for the y component. For pi on 6, we found that 
the coordinates or the coordinate for this point here was root 3 over 2 for the x component and 1 half for the y component. Now, if we were to draw a horizontal line across, it does look like that horizontal line <clears throat> would intersect the y axis at y equals 1 half. So that's a nice visual indicator to say that we're on the right track. And the reason why we are pretty much done is now we just consider a cast diagram. Okay, we don't actually have to draw a cast diagram. Okay, um, you can pretty much work this out in your head. I'm just drawing one so that uh, you don't have to read my mind so that you can uh, follow what I'm thinking. And now we know that in this quadrant, sine and cosine are positive. Okay, which means that all of these values for the components of these coordinates are going to be similar to the values we will get in this quadrant. It's just that all of the y values, which is to say the sine values, will be positive, whilst the x values will be negative because we are in the quadrant where x is negative and y is positive. In other words, only the sine function is positive in this quadrant. So let's put that in. We will have for this point, negative one half, positive root three on two. Okay, now for this point, we will have negative one half for our x component and positive one half for our y component. Now for this point, we will have negative root 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. That will be our coordinate for that point. Okay, so really once you've done these, you've pretty much done the rest. You just have to consider where the components are positive and negative respectively. A cast diagram can assist you there, or you can just imagine the cast diagram on the unit circle. Okay, so I will just do the rest. And this quadrant is where both sine and cosine are negative. So all components will be negative here. So I'm just going to copy all of these. And they'll all be negative. So this will be negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Okay. This will be negative 1 over the square root of 2 comma, negative 1 over the square root of 2. This will be negative half and negative root 3 over 2. Okay, now we're into a new quadrant where both x and y are negative. So both cosine and sine are negative. Sorry, x is positive and y is negative. So cosine is positive and sine is negative. So this point here, will be positive one half because x or cosine is positive and negative root three over two because y or sine is negative. This point here will have the following coordinates, positive one over the square root of two, comma, negative one over the square root of two. And this point here will have, I'm sure you can tell, positive root 3 over 2, and negative 1 half. Okay, and you can see that these points are already done, okay, as well as that one. Okay, so that is a construction of the trigonometric unit circle. You did not, you know, you don't need to memorize this. This is, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the thing that some teachers and textbooks recommend to students memorize for trigonometry. Uh, you can get away with just memorizing these two special triangles, okay? And note that we really only had to find the values for the sine and the cosine of the special angles in one quadrant. Then we could just use what we know about the quadrants and where the trigonometric values are positive and negative respectively to write in the rest, fill in the rest of the trigonometric unit circle. So you tell me, what looks easier to memorize? The unit circle 
or the two special triangles. And the reason why everything that memorizing the trigonometric unit circle enables you to do, you can also do just by memorizing the special triangles, is that there are lots and lots of these, like lots and lots of instances of these special triangles implicitly defined, uh, or really just defined on the unit circle. Okay, I don't want to say implicitly defined. Um, you might think I'm suggesting something more than what I'm suggesting. So for instance, uh, here would be an instance of the special triangle. Okay, this angle here is pi on six. It would turn out that that angle there, okay, once you calculated what that angle is, would turn out to be pi on three. Okay, and you can see here is another instance of a special triangle. Okay. It would be a right angle triangle as well. Okay, and the angle near the origin is pi on four, and so is this angle. That's pi on four. Okay, now these aren't the actual special triangles, they are scaled down versions of the special triangles. So you would actually have to scale the sides of these special triangles to get, or you would have to scale the sides of the triangles that I'm drawing in the unit circle to arrive at these special triangles. So for instance, the one that I've drawn in blue would actually have the following information. Okay. So this would be a side length of one. Okay, this would be an angle of pi over four. Okay, suppose we didn't know what the other angle was. In fact, we didn't work it out. I just I just said it's pi over four. You shouldn't take my word for it. Let's actually find out what it is and we'll introduce a variable for it, phi. Okay, now we know that the interior angles of a right angle triangle must add to 180 degrees or pi radians. We know that the length of the hypotenuse is one because that's just the radius of the unit circle. We don't know what this side length is. So we'll just call it A and we don't know what this side length is. So we'll just call it B. Okay, but let's find the size of our unknown angle phi. And we know that this angle is pi over two radians or 90 degrees. So we can say that pi over four, okay, 45 degrees plus pi over two, okay, plus 90 degrees plus phi, okay, those are all the angles of this triangle, must sum to pi radians or 180 degrees, okay? The interior angles of a triangle must add to 180 degrees, okay? So, when we simplify these two fractions, we will get three pi over four plus our unknown angle phi, which we know must be equal to pi. Okay, when we subtract three pi over four from both sides, we will get phi equals pi minus three pi on four. Okay, and when you work this out, you will find that this just equals pi on four. So our unknown angle, theta, sorry, phi, that's the ancient Greek letter. My surface is very uh, sensitive today. That's the ancient Greek letter phi, okay? Uh, turns out that phi just equals pi over four radians. So it's the same as this angle here. And you know what? If that angle spans a side length of B, okay, and the other angle is the same, well, this angle, uh, this side length must be the same as the other side length. So we could really just give them both the same name. So we'll just call both of them A, actually. We'll call them both A. All right. And now we know that Pythagoras' theorem tells us the, you know, that the, the less, you know, if we have a triangle and this is a side length of A and this is a side length of B and this is the hypotenuse is a side length of C and it's a right angle triangle. We know that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, okay? And the actual length of the hypotenuse is what you would get if you took the square root of both sides. Okay, so the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Well, notice that the length of the hypotenuse is one. We already know what it is, okay? Which would leave us with the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides, but both sides are the same length, so it would just be a squared plus a squared, which would give us the square root of two times a squared. Okay, it's just two lots of a squared. Okay, and then 
the square root would undo the square of the a. So in fact, I'll do this extra step so you can, you know, just in case you are still getting used to um, operations with radicals. Okay. And we would just be left with this third, one over the square root of two times a. Okay. And then to get a by itself, we just divide both sides by the square root of two. So you would have a over the square root of two. Okay. So now we know that both of these side lengths are one over the square root of two. Okay. That's still not our special triangle. Okay. Um, so in order to get our special triangle, right? Remember our special triangle that has pi over four in it has two side lengths of one, two angles of pi over four, and a hypotenuse of the square root of two. I don't know why that wasn't written there. Um, so what would we have to do to this triangle to get to our familiar special triangle? Well, we'd have to scale the sides. In other words, we would have to uh, increase the length of each side by the same quantity. Okay. And this won't change the size of the interior angles, because if you imagine a rectangle, okay, so this rectangle, its interior angles are 90 degrees, okay, they would sum to 360, or pi over 2 radians, and they would sum to 2 pi radians, okay. If you scaled this rectangle, so we have a length here, whoops, we have a length here and a width, okay, if we scaled this triangle and made it bigger, all right, by, you know, a factor of two, so let's say we doubled the size of it, this is not drawn to scale, okay, but just imagine that this rectangle has been scaled by two, so its length is twice as long and its width is twice as long as the previous rectangle, okay, intuitively, you can tell that these angles are still 90 degrees. These angles have not changed. Okay. And a triangle you can just think of as two rectangles. Sorry, a, a rectangle you can just think of as two triangles. So our triangle in particular, okay, would just be, you know, if you had two of our triangles, it would correspond to a square because two side lengths have length one. Okay, it's a right angle triangle. Okay, this would be the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that would be the square root of two. Okay, so what do we have to do to this triangle in order to derive our more familiar special triangle is scale everything by the square root of two. So I will do that all over here where I'm away from the rest of the mess. I'll redraw our triangle. Which is our right angle triangle. Uh, I think this side length was one. Yeah, it must have been because it was the radius of the unit circle. Uh, this was one over root two. This was one over root two. And this was pi over four. And this, of course, was pi over four as well. Okay, if we multiply the length of each side by root two, or well, the length of the hypotenuse. Would become root 2. If we multiply that by root 2, it's going to become 1 times root 2. And if we multiply this by root 2, we will have 1 over root 2 times root 2. And you will see that these will cancel and you'll just get 1. So both of these side lengths would be 1. And our angles have remained unchanged. These two are still both pi over 4. And of course, this one is still pi over 2. Okay. And the other special triangle can be derived in similar fashion. So the special triangles are actually just present in the trigonometric unit circle, just they've, you know, they are scaled down versions of the special triangle. Um, they are mini versions of the special triangles. Okay, and now I'll just show you a computer generated image of the trigonometric unit circle because it's neater to look at than the one I've drawn. So this is it. Okay, and I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see everything, okay? And you can see, as I said, that uh, whoever created this image likes to rationalize their denominators when they're doing trigonometry, okay? Uh, I don't like doing that um, for reasons which 
you you know by now you've probably heard me say it several times but you know root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 is just equal to 1 over root 2 okay this here is just what you get when you rationalize this denominator okay so yeah this is not something that is uh really all that easy to remember i guess but all of this information is contained within the special triangles so remember them instead and once you remember the special triangles you really remember all of the information in this quadrant and then you just consider in which quadrants the x and y which is to say the cosine and the sine values are positive and negative respectively and <coughs> excuse me the other quadrants are almost copies of the first quadrant it's just that uh, some of the components will be positive and some of the components will be negative depending on which quadrant you are in so if you found this video helpful uh, give it a like feel free to share the video if you have a question post it in the comments and if you'd like a notification when i upload a new video subscribe to my channel until next time, bye for now.